Well, hello. It's that time again. For me, it's Thursday, and for you, it'll be Friday. Friday the 26th of August. That means my great-grandson, Tommy, is eight months exactly today as you're watching. Eight months. It doesn't seem possible that uh, Lois walked in with baby and it was eight months ago. Now he's growing fine. There's a little bit uh, of film of him at the end and there's also a little bit of film, well I'll explain that, about the chat I have with mum. Anyway, before all of that, it's my name's Penny, Penelope's Chinwag, and that's what it is. It's a chinwag. Um, I talk about my crafting, what I've been up to. I have a little chat with mum. I do a fascinating fact. That's an interesting one this week. I really enjoyed this one about a snail. And then there's a little film at the end. A walk into Ramsgate. Our days here in the southeast of England have been glorious. It still is. Um, the sun shining and it's just beautiful. Since I saw you last, we've had friends to stay. And so our friends, Jan and Bob, if you've watched through from the beginning, he wrote the poem about the fig tree. And um, we've been friends since the year dot, really. So um, it's lovely when they come. It's we said do come again soon because we love their visits. And yes, that's it really, just to set the scene. So that's what it is. It's a chinwag and thank you for sharing with me. And I love your comments. It really adds to it. I love answering them and, and just hearing what you're up to, where you live in the world, what you'd like to see, what you'd like to hear me talk about. Well, I asked that question last time. Would you like to see what I'm going to do with the quilt? Yes, please, said quite a few of you. So I'll be showing you that. I'll take you along. We'll do it together. Um, I won't start with that, though. I'm going to start with the sloth, Edward. Now, it's funny because I've just knitted these others. You've seen in previous episodes, George the dog, Holly the hedgehog, um, there they are, well, George is over there, I think. Oh yes, there's George and Holly, they're best friends. Then I've got Tilly the hare and Maisie the pig. Watch out for Maisie the pig in my little film, because just behind there is, is a, um, a travel cot. And we bought the travel cot, and I thought, oh, Tommy won't want to sit in that. As soon as we put him in, he just laid down and went to sleep. He loves it. So he came to me yesterday and I just popped him in there and he had a little play. He's got two teeth now. You can see them. It's so chewed on the side. Anyway, I'm digressing. Watch out for Maisie because he had her in the cot on her face. Oh, Maisie the pig. I have a little face looking up as if to say, get me out of here. So I'm going to start with Edward the Sloth, yeah. Now, I said noses. I undid his nose about four or five times. Nope. I said, wait till you're in the mood. And I just went upstairs, put my hand on this, and it's a really, oh, it's like a velvety wool. I don't know what. Was it the tea cosy that's knitted in it? It might be. My friend might have sent me that because she made me a lovely tea cosy. Anyway, hand straight on. One attempt. The nose is done. Here he is. He's got his nose. Can you see? He's gorgeous. And it just suits him. He's, it's just right. He's, he lays about most of the time. Oh, yes, you see, there's something about a sloth. I've done one slipper. It's gorgeous. It's fur trimmed. And I did the other slipper. And my friend who was staying said, I don't know how you knit that, chatting away to me. Oh, I said, it's fine. I can do it. Of course, I couldn't. I made a mistake. So it's almost finished. But being a sloth, I knew he wouldn't mind if he came on board. He's got his hands here and his claws. 
and uh, that's what he does. He just hangs about upside down mostly and chats to them. He loves it. He loves it. You've settled right in, haven't you? He settled right in. But the slipper's lovely. Backless. I don't know why I made a mistake on the on the top. But uh, that'll soon be rectified. And hopefully he'll have a slipper next time you see him. Now I didn't start another one. The next one I'm going to do is the chimpanzee. Because I'm going to use up quite a... I've got the wool for him. And I'm going to knit his clothes in a variety of happy happy uh, colours but I'm not going to start him yet I'm going to give my hand a break so that's Edward so we'll see you later Edward yes he's as happy as Larry <laughs> you you settled in right he's going I'll put him over here no I'll just put him on the chair that's it now what else have I got oh yes I was watching a podcast that I always watch, Mousy Makes, Helen. Yes, she's off in her camper van this week. And it's certainly not for me. Don't ever think I'll be in competition with a camper van. I won't. Because there's quite a bit of competition that goes with a camper van, I know. My hairdresser was telling me she's got one. I um, I went for a haircut this morning. Anyway, what was I talking about? Camper vans, yes. And I was looking at the, she's got a site where she tells you of the podcast she likes to watch. And I must say, I was very pleased to see my name there. But top of the list is Yarn and Yarn. I think that's right. I meant to look it up before I sat here. But I think it's Yarn and Yarn. So if it's not, I'll put up what it is. And what super service I got from her she showed some new wool and she held up a sock and I must say I fell in love with it because what with all the scare about how cold we're going to be this winter and I feel the cold I thought I'm going to knit myself a long pair of socks and she showed well here they are there's about 10 different colors so if you don't like that one you can choose. And of course, I chose the wrong one. Quickly messaged her, emailed her and said, oh, can you send me the... Yes, that was no problem. And I got it the next day. So super service. And it's called Earth Yarn Hand Eyed. It comes in two balls and they're exactly matching, which is what I liked. And you can see where they've done it toe up because I started with the blue and they've got the blue by the toe it's so soft it's got a very nice twist to it a very nice twist the only thing I'd say about it oh it's gorgeous but the only thing I'd say about it is sometimes it does split um, if you don't get your needle exactly in the stitch it's not a problem but just to let you know, it does do that. I think it's because of the twist. There's a high twist there. So I'll show you what I've done. Well, then, of course, I thought, oh, goodness, I want to knit a knee-high sock. How do I do that? I like 56 stitches on my foot. I like 60 stitches just above my ankle. And I cast on 92 to go right up my leg I've got quite you know podgy calf but then I think we've all got podgy calves but I haven't got a slim leg by any stretch of the imagination so I cast on 92 and did the rib and then every four rows I did a double decrease SSK knit two together and in the middle of that I knitted two SSK, knit two, knit two together. For those of you that aren't knitters, SSK is slip one stitch off, slip two stitch off, slip them back onto your needle and then knit in the back. And it gives the that way and the knit two together gives that way. So it's reverse. 
and it's worked out super. And you'll see what I mean by if you do it toe up. I haven't finished it yet because I've been working it out. Uh, I've got that much wool left and I weighed the sock that I like and I think that's going to be just right, just right. But obviously knitting toe up, you're, you're going to be able to knit every last bit. I might do that next time, I really might. But this is what I've done, you can see. There it is, there's my heel. You can see my heel and you can see my decreases there every fourth row decrease and then I stopped decreasing when I got to 60 because my sock likes to be a 60 but then when I got to here I decreased to 56 and now my foot is going, because I've got a slim foot. So my, my foot's going to be 56. That's 60. And this is 92. It's worked out fine. You can see the shape. Look. It's worked out fine. My little fat calf. They're oh, it's beautiful. So I'm going, well, as soon as Pete saw it, he said, I want some of those. <laughs> so I think I might knit his toe up. And then I'll be increasing rather than decreasing. Um, and what they said is, in Turkey, because this is where the wool is from, in Turkey, the women change needle size. So they do this in a bigger needle size, and then they change to a smaller needle size. That's how they traditionally knit their socks. But I decided to do that decreasing, and you can see it looks fine. It really does. And it fits me beautifully. So I wanted to show you that. It doesn't matter that that's there and that's there. But it is a bit like yarn chicken, they call it, isn't it? Am I going to have enough? I will have enough. But then I might just have that little bit over that I could have done with knitting at the top. So, yeah. I think it's toe up. Let's see. I wanted to show you that. For all you sock knitters out there. unique earth yarns made in turkey right so that's that and then you get two balls so each sock's going to be exactly the same so what's next on my list oh yes i've worked the quilt out so before i tell you my workings out I want to tell you the problem I had. So I've got all the fabric I showed you last time. And when you're going to make a quilt, the first thing you need to think of, is there a pattern that I like? Is there a quilt pattern that I want to do? And then you can buy the fabric according to the pattern. Do you need a small print? Do you need larger? Well, I saw the fabric before I'd thought about the pattern because it was on offer. And I know this is for my daughter <laughs> who's going to have a new grandchild and she wants to keep the quilt at her house. I'm going to make it 64 inches square because I've decided on the pattern. But this is where I'm telling you. These are very large. You know, if you cut it off, it won't matter. If you did a small piece but you're going to lose that design that lends itself to a smaller piece but that basically you want P for Peter let's have a look this is quite you know it's quite big if you want to get that they're all quite big here we go I mean you can fussy cut it and just get him but I wanted to get the design. So I've come up. So when you buy your fabric, think about what design do I want to make? Does the design call for small prints or does the design call for large prints? And it's much easier to find a quilt pattern that you like for small prints. 
you can see my problem. So I've come up with the design and oh I did draw it out just to show you but we'll go into that next week. It's going to be done on point which means I'm going to cut a ten and a half inch square from this fabric. Ten and a half inch you see that will give me a good deal of the pattern won't it? But it's not going to be a square like that, it's going to be on point. In other words, it's going to look from the top of the quilt like a diamond. So then you'll need to get your pattern upright for the diamond. How can I show you? It'll be more like that, won't it? The top, the point and it's going to come out into a diamond and go down there. So that you're going to have the pattern going that way but you're going to see that design. I'm going to fussy cut it. How many ten and a half inch squares do I need? Uh, mm, I did work it out. I think it's 16. That will show that fabric off nicely. And then for the triangle, you'll see, I'll show you next week. If it's like, oh, he's calling me, I'll be back. We've got a block sink. That's exciting for you. I told you it's a chin wag about all different things. He's just walked through with the waste pipe, not through the conservatory, th all through the house with the waste pipe to show me how blocked it is. Oh, it's such fun. Anyway, getting back to my quilt. I've made a silly drawing. Can you see? I'm going to do squares in one, two, three, plain, and then plain. These plain bits are the fabric that I've just shown you. So when you turn it upright, it's going to be a diamond. So there we are. So the fab, the, the pattern will run that way. But <laughs> I'll show you. It's, go it's going to be quite interesting to make. And so it's going to be that pattern. Why? Because it's a big print. And I want to show my prints off. I don't want to cut them all up too small. For this little squares I will do. But then I can cut this little bit for the square. Because I'm only going to need a couple of 10 inch squares. And then the rest of it I can cut up small. So that's my first tip. If you're thinking about making a quilt, think about the size of the print for the pattern. So we'll do more of that next week. Right, oh, I've got one more thing to show you and then I will skedaddle. I wanted to show you this book. It's a beautiful book. I have shown it to you before, but if you're a new viewer or you forget, you can't remember everything I say, can you? Um, it's by Lorna Bateman. And it's Embroidered Country Gardens. Oh, I love this book. All, all these things she's got broken down into little bits. And so you can just do that, you can just do that. And uh, it's all described very beautifully. And she tells you how to do all the stitches. It is such a beautiful book. Oh, my ones enjoy stitching, Lorna. Do you remember... I made a little macaron and I love it. I keep my rings in it. I was so pleased with it. And so I've bought quite a few zips and quite a few of the plastic bits that you need for there. I thought, right, I bought a different coloured zip. I bought a green one. I put Liberty Print on the back. Just the bits, you know, just the bits from Stash. And then I did, is it Mille Fiori? A Thousand Flowers. Just mostly French knots, which I love. I'm picking up the different colours. I was really pleased with that. What did I put in the middle? I think I might have kept it quite neutral. Yes, I did. I put that in the middle. It's nice and padded. You can get quite a lot in there. So I was really pleased with that. 
and I, I, I'm on a roll. <laughs> Other things are getting left. So I'm using the silks from Lorna Bateman. She does the most exquisite silks. I tell you why I love them. They're hand dyed by chameleon threads. You don't have to. You can use any number of threads if you've got some. But I love these. Can you see how they change? Hand dyed. Winter dawn. She does all number of ones. That one is sea spray. It's a little bit greener in real life. I just picked those out of the pile. And oh, here's one. You can see as it comes. They're not expensive. They're really not. And they go such a long way. I buy the pearl because they've got such a lovely twist to them. Anyway, I did another one. Well, I was I was chatting to my friend. She said, oh, Pen, will you show me how to make these? So she's gone home having made a couple. And I think she's going to make a couple more. And I did that one next. with a plain zip and uh, that's a tilde fabric what did I put in the middle oh a little tilde I was really pleased with it it's just such fun just sitting there doing French knots while you're chatting and then I thought oh I fancy doing the design that I've seen in here on a what's it on oh it's on a um oh yes a tape measure cover I thought I'm going to do that that'll fit nicely can you see it watering can with the flowers cascading over and a few bees so I've drawn my watering can Uh, that's that's the size I need to pull it round the plastic macaron and that's the size I actually need for it to sit on the front like that. So that's my next easy peasy. Just sit and do some, if you can do a French knot, up, round twice, pull back in, get yourself some threads. Rose Garden Patchwork. She sells these gorgeous heavy zips and the macarons, the plastic macarons. And they come in a day or two. It's marvellous. So what lovely things we can get. So I think I'll leave it there. Talk about crafting this week, hasn't it? So I'm going to now introduce the fascinating fact. And I was just sending best wishes to my friend Heather this morning before she went off to work. Yesterday she had a day of crafting and she made a snail and he is such a gorgeous fella that I put him, well, I was doing going to do a fascinating fact about the snail and uh, he somehow cre crept in. So the fascinating fact, well, you'll see, is coming up next. The shell of the scaly foot snail Oh, sorry, this is about the scaly foot snail. Sorry. Well, it has one of the strongest external skeletons ever discovered in nature. The scaly foot snail found at the floor of the Indian Ocean can withstand the water pressure occurring at a depth of some 8,000 feet or 2,400 metres. This little mollusk is unaffected by both the high acidity of the water and its fluctuating temperature, including the hot water that gushes from hydrothermal vents. The shell also shields it from attack by predators. Its shell has three layers. The first is composed of iron sulphides. The second resembles the protein coating found on other snail species and the third is made up of a calcium mineral called aragonite. With its triple layer of defence, the scaly foot snail 
is impervious to attack by predator crabs, which try to crush the shell with their powerful claws. The crab may grip the snail for days at a time, but the shell holds fast. It's like a suit of armour. It was discovered in 2001, but is on the endangered list due to mining. Researchers hope to copy the structure of the scaly foot snail shell in order to produce stronger helmets, bulletproof vests, ships and aircraft hulls, even Arctic oil pipelines that are buffeted by icebergs could benefit, says Discover. The scaly foot snail, who would have thought it? I've never heard of it. But uh, it's intriguing, isn't it, that it can make itself so strong it can't be broken into. Anyway, while you were watching that, I went down and got my eggs for the day from the chickens. I just wanted to show you the size of egg I got. Look at that. Can you see it? It's just enormous, my whole hand. Well... So I think that would count as two, wouldn't it? That's why it's very good to weigh them when you make your Victoria sponges because eggs come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Anyway, um, so now I'm going to introduce Mum. And we talk about 1946, but we still, yeah, we're still going on about the war really because although it's, it has ended, you know, is still not back to normal by any means. So enjoy my chat with mum. So, hello, we're back hello. again. Hello, good morning. Yes, lovely. And we're going to start 1945 July, mum. Oh, yes. The end of the war. End of the yes. war, yes. So, in, in my mind, I would think end of war, you almost think going back to normal. Yes. But we're far oh, from that, no. aren't we? It took a few years yeah. to get back yeah. to what you would call normal. Yeah, yes. good few years, A Mom. good few years. So we got here, Mum, July the 15th, after 2,000 nights of blackout and dim out, Britain was ablaze with light once again. Oh, yes. And uh, mm. it switched on Piccadilly oh, Circus, yes, yes. and it says in heavily bombed Croydon, uh, the streets were packed with 7,000 street... The streets were packed, packed. when 7,000 street lamps came back came on. Came back on. Yeah. Oh, that was marvellous. And that was a marvellous song that Vera Lynn sang. Oh. When the lights go on again all over the world. Oh. And that was a yeah, song that was to commemorate sung for a that. long, long time. Yes. Yeah. yes. So the lights have gone back on. And then, of course, well... We're all celebrating, yeah. as you say, but of course then we have Hiroshima. two, two, yes. two atomic bombs dropped, yes. Mum, which is oh. a catastrophe, yeah. catastrophe for yes. the world. Yes, that was, that was where VJ Day came in. Yes. Because when that was they surrendered. finished and they yeah. surrendered, then that was VJ Day. Uh, and but that was terrible. And you said, though, Mum, it wasn't like today where it would be all across Sky no, News, all across yeah. the news. No. You didn't see it. No, no. didn't see it. You just could hear that on the radio, on the, radio. the big headlines on newspapers. Yeah. But what you did see was if you went to the cinema to watch a film or whatever, then Gaumont News then was a big, big new American news. And right. You'd have just perhaps five minutes of news, but you'd see that, like you would see now on television. Yes. You would see that. But it wasn't thrust in your face no, like now. No. Now, now you can't get no. away from it. No. And it's really, no. you have to limit yourself yes. with the news you watch yes. now, don't you? But at least people who did go to the cinema and watch that bit of news, they did know and could see yes. what had happened in other parts of the world yes. and what was happening. Now, they're talking about demobbing, Mum, um, and they hope to demob a million men. This is August. They hope yes. to demob a million men by December. That didn't quite happen, and the servicemen did get quite angry yes. because, you know, to demob mm. all those men, you've got to have the ships, mm. you've got yes. to have the, the, the you yes. know, the manpower yes. to bring them all back home. Yes. Well, yes. of course, you were newly married. Dad hadn't gone into the war, no, had he, he? He was of the age of call-up, 
Yeah. But he hadn't gone because he was taking the place of a man who would have been at the war. Right. And who would have been make, using sheet metal as he was, making yes. things that was needed during the war. Right. So he wasn't called up until 1946. 1946. Yes. So I'm in January here, 1946 now. So presumably yes. Dad's yes. been called but up. He had his call-up papers. And I believe it was in the March that he oh, right. he was he actually went, went to the. Oh, you'd been married a year, Mum. Yes. With all this war and the, and yes. then you know the yes. end, but we're saying it was yes. still not good. No. And that must and have been. And then suddenly, Dad was gone for two years. Yeah, in the Dad force. was gone for yes. two years, yes. and you'd lost your mum. So again, yes. a difficult, difficult time yes. for you. Yes. It yes. Was. Yeah, and we've got here, Mum. A first civilian flight taking off from Heathrow, and it's oh. two words, Heath, H-E-A-T-H, -E and then Row, R-O-W, oh. and it's saying that at the minute, um, it's going to be a future terminus. At the minute, it's just a great plain of earth with few facilities apart from a row of huts and tents and some telephone boxes. But the plan is to spend 20 million on development of what will be Britain's largest airport. airport. Yeah. Okay. It, it will yeah. open, it says, hopefully in June. And it's expected to be popular with pilots because there are no apparent obstructions to take off and landing. So this is a, oh, the new thing. Yes. Yeah. Then we've got yeah. IBM introducing a calculator, oh. Mum. Oh. Well, it says it's not like an adding no. machine. Well, no. I mean, this is in America. Uh, but it says it's got like a brain. And of course, yes. 1946 here, we've got the, the beginnings yes. of what we're using now, yes. really, haven't we? All those electrical gadgets. Yes. yes which were just marvellous, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. And of course, a lot of them were, were started in America. Uh, it was, yes. was America, Mum. Yes. This was America. It's in Pennsylvania. Yes. And this, there's a trade in London in the market stores where coupon-free clothing is available. Oh, coupons, yeah, That yes. must have been very tempting if well, you were coupon-free clothing. My job then, right. while Dad was in the Air Force, was yeah. working in the local office of the big... Um, Taylors, the big London Taylors, Burtons. Burtons. Was it Burtons? Yeah. And I was helping doing the books, and but not just doing the books. We somebody else took charge of all the money, but then all the figures that came in for different days of selling the goods. We had to count the co clothing coupons to make sure that there were enough ah. coupons with all the suits or trousers or jackets or whatever was sold. That actually went, that all actually tallied went, up. Yes, yeah, all added up. Because oh, that that's was, interesting yes, job, Mum. That was all legal then. And you said that was, where was that? That was in uh, Islington. The Angel? At the Angel Islington, which was very busy, busy, busy place then. Was it? Yes. Well, it's a busy place oh, now. Yes. And, of course, Loop... Knitting is there at the Angel. We've been there. It's a very tiny shop. It's lovely, but um, that's exactly where yes. you where you yes. lived and worked, isn't it? Was it Mom? Busy, busy. Yeah. yeah. So there's lovely picture of a reunion here because they didn't. She didn't know where her husband was. No. Missing, presumed no. dead. Yes. But here he is, coming yes. back, reunited. Well, that was my first job before all that during yeah. the war. Was at the local little news agent whose right. husband was a prisoner of war. Ah, right. And she never knew when she was going to see him again. Yeah. Did you ever know that she did yes, see him? Yes, oh. and I did meet him. Oh, yes, lovely. After the war. Oh, but, that must have been thrilling, yes, Mum. Yes, because her little girl was only six. And she, her little girl was just three when he was taken prisoner. So she had three years of not knowing where he was, or just that he was a prisoner of war. Yeah. So that was lovely when he w he came home and got back. And, and we're looking at the price of things because we've just seen here 
that the dockers are on strike, which is causing yes. a huge problem yes. for anybody to get yes. food, even if they have, have yes. got coupons. Yes. But they're earning 25 shillings a day. Yeah, so after four days, they earn five pounds. After four whole days' work as a yes. docker. Yes. Now, let me tell you the price, Mum, here in May 1946. The price of a return from London to Edinburgh on the train now costs six pounds, pounds eighteen yes. and nine. I mean, mm, we're talking yes. a week's wages yes. to get to Edinburgh on yes. the train, Mum. Yes. That's amazing, mm. isn't it? Yes. The trains were very expensive then because I think you probably remember seeing the photograph of me with my parents. Oh, going to just South End for the day. Yes. Which was, but we went on on the coach. You couldn't afford to go on the train. Oh, righty ho! So train yes, fares were, were not like now. No. They're, they're quite reasonable yes. now. You know, yes. I love train travel yes. when they're quite reasonable. Mm. Yeah. Fans fill terraces as soccer is reborn, oh, like you say. Yes. The men are coming back now. Yes. And you've got your Saturday league yes. program. Ah, oh, yes, we've got a new pen. Oh, and Mum, yes, that was 55 sure. shillings, the oh. new pen. We're talking here. You know, 25 shillings for a day's work, 55 shillings, shillings to buy for a biro a pen. Biro. Yes. Amazing, isn't but it? But my goodness, weren't they wonderful? When you think of how, how, well, I think of when I was at school and at work, Yes. You had to dip your pen into the ink, to, or you had a fountain pen. Yeah. You had to fill that with ink. Yes, <gasps> you've got a borrow oh, now, Mum, if you can yes. afford one, if mm. you can afford one. We've got, um, yes. the government says that food controls are to be relaxed, but bread will still be rationed. Be rationed yes. So it, it's quite hard yes. to get food, Mum. Yes. So here you are, living on your own. Yes. Uh, Dad's called up for two years. Yes. And um, yes, but when he did come home on leave, he always managed to, on the way, perhaps find somewhere under the counter. Did he? <laughs> Bring, yes. Right. He managed he, to get you some yes. food. Yeah. Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman are on at oh. the cinema. Dad's favourite, wasn't oh, she? Oh, yes. And you didn't, you liked Cary Grant yes. too, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. When so, you think that we're still getting some of those lovely old films on the television, you know, now during, since Covid, we've had a lot of really old, old films. Old films, are right, yeah, and you like watching those. Yes. Yeah. In the UK, widespread flooding occurs after the eighth successive day of rain. This is in November. It must have been jolly heavy rain. Yes. We haven't had rain now. I know that some parts of the rest of the country have had heavy showers yeah. and rain. We have had a short shower. Actually, yes. we were out for a walk and we just mm. sheltered under a tea, tree for 10 I think minutes. It's about eight weeks, isn't it? Must be eight had, or yeah. nine weeks since yes. we've had since rain. We've had rain. We have yes. had, and it's still jolly yes. warm here. Yesterday yes. I was boiling. Yes. Um, yes. So, yeah, we're still well, in the southeast of England. Yeah, yeah. Yes. look, we're still mm. very warm. No rain. I must say, I'm loving it. Yes. I know. People yes. need rain, but we're not oh, we're not winter people, are we? It won't be long not? before the winter. So we'll be moaning yes, away. Yeah. Make the most of now. I know some people love autumn and winter, but yes. I love the summer. Yes. So we're going to say goodbye yes. and we'll start 1947 Lovely. next time. Lovely being with you. Yeah. Yes. Thanks a lot then. Yes. Bye-bye. Well, I get such lovely messages uh, about Mum's piece and uh, she enjoys doing it. And uh, thank you for all those lovely thoughts. So I'm going to introduce the film now. And yes, it's a little walk into Broadstairs. It's our darling great-grandson, Tommy, and our friends that visited, Jan and Bob. And also then, it was the commemoration of the first day when Ramsgate got bombed, 500 bombs dropped in five minutes and so they let the uh, air raid siren sound and so we went and uh, I filmed it 
and uh, I put that with my little film so if you don't fancy hearing the air raid siren if it brings back some memories then um, skip the end bit just to warn you but mum said oh that sound you know she could remember it so well so I'll see you next time thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah I'll see you when I see you bye then bye take care happy crafting I think I prefer you sitting down. Oh, you want to walk, don't you?